just really an impromptu because during the week, I just, I was like, what in the world? I have like so much stuff that I wanted to share, but obviously the time is very limited. So I, I was just, I, I couldn't even do an outline. Usually I, you know, I, I taught public speaking for like 30 years and bang out outlines in literally 15, 20 minutes, pretty good ones too. After, you know, all those years, I was just a blank. I couldn't, I couldn't condense anything. So it's an impromptu. So Lord, uh, I just pray that you would have your way that, uh, It'd be a glorifying you and, and exalting your your goodness to us, and that hearts would be encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, this church had such a big part in uh, my job. Um, I was constantly under attack. I was constantly under threat of being fired. Um, and it was just like, I couldn't share even a fraction of what was going on with Carla. Not to disrespect her, but she was just not um, at the same faith level. Like she was like freaking out. You're gonna get fired. You're gonna get fired. So I knew I had to just trust God, and and so I believe that God, um, little by little by little, he, he brings you through trials for bigger trials and for bigger things. And sometimes you don't even realize that that's exactly what he's doing. He's He's kind of preparing you. I, I see what's coming. So let me let me give you some little little things first, and then get through those, and your faith kind of builds. And, and that's exactly what happened over the years. Um, to kind of like go back, um, I became a Christian. When I was 18, and I'm not going to even go there. How that all happened? My family was a complete disaster. Um, and when I came to the Lord, I, you know, after a while, I went to Bible college, went to a little Bible college, and, and right away, I realized I loved studying, and before that, before I was a Christian, I had no interest in school, I had no interest in studying, really, I thought it was stupid, stuff, the, the stuff I was learning was like, what, what is this, it's not relevant, you know, and then once I became a Christian and I started studying, uh, I realized I, I loved it, and, um, so I would spend hours and hours and hours. And then, no brainer, you know, people started telling me, oh, you have the gift to teach. And I was like, oh, okay, so I'll go, I'll go to Bible college, and da, 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 and I thought I was going to end up in ministry or whatever. And, well, uh, was at a church, in ministry, ordained minister, and I was just seeing things that weren't, weren't lining up. And, and I had still issues, still do have issues, but I had issues of just being like super bold and super straightforward, and and um, that didn't work out all that great. Um, and I'm criticizing guys older than me that, that literally started a church from the ground up, and I'm just, you know, a little kid wet behind the ears, and who are you to criticize? Blah, 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 blah. And then it was another, then I got involved with, uh, a pastor wanted to give me his church. He was planning on moving on, and he was a Calvinist. And I was not a Calvinist, so I started studying Calvinism, Arminianism, and I was like, "No, I can't. I, I can't. I can't just stay silent about this. This is just too big of an issue." So, and then then I went to another Bible college, went off to Jimmy Swaggart's, and a year into that, and you know that thing, I was so discouraged, so frustrated and discouraged I'm like God I tried everything and it's just not working out and so I said you know what forget it forget this whole ministry business you know it's just not working out and I was really gave up like gave up on that that idea of going into the ministry long story short I had a couple jobs I ended up in the prison and um, I became a teacher and I was and Right away, again, that love for teaching, that love for learning just kicked in like super strong and, and God started stirring my heart and, and I was like, wow, Lord, this is this is good. And so I decided that I'm going to do it with all my heart. Whatever you do, do it unto the Lord, do it with all your heart. And I, I looked at the mission statement. I looked at the, the history of education and corrections. It was all green lights. I says, this is godly. Originally. The purpose for education and corrections was to reform in America, and it was it was through the scriptures, it was through studying, it was through prayer, it was I, I did all the history, 
and I studied the history. As I was digging into the history, I was just excited. And so, sure enough, as time went on, my first year still under probation, I get called to the principal's office, and he's shaking his head. He goes, Mike, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean? And he says, religion. Why so much religion? He goes, he goes, a bunch of students are complaining. I said, well, I'm complaining. Ah, you know, what? He, no, 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 no. He says, no, 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 no. So then he, then he started getting a little forceful. I got a little nervous. I'm on probation. They can just look at me. And I said, oh, if I come home and tell Carla, she's just, I got to listen to this. And it's just not going to be good. So I started praying and I started seeking the Lord about it. And I still remember uh, Henry Gustinelli, a great friend who became a mentor. He looked at me and he goes, you're not taking this serious enough. And he says, you need to get a lawyer. And I said, I have an advocate with the father. And I was serious. I, I was, that was it. I was not going to uh, lapse in my faith. And so I said, I have an advocate with the father. What I'm trying to do is not wrong. And and so um, I started praying. And, and in the meantime, I contacted um, uh, uh, 700 Club. They have uh, that ministry with uh, Jay Seculo. Uh and the lady, I was talking to the lady, we prayed, and, and she said she's going to send me some books. So in the meantime, you know, I'm still a little nervous. And um, after after school one day, this kid, I didn't even like this kid. He was just a wise guy. I didn't like him. Had no feelings of affection towards him whatsoever. I was just like, I don't like you. Uh, and he, he says, can I talk to you? After class, I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, sure. I'm like, oh man, I don't want to talk to this guy. And as soon as everybody left, he was sitting there really, really humble. And he said, Could God forgive murder? The presence of God filled that room immediately. And I just started crying. And I was like, What in the world? And I started just sharing with him scriptures. And they were they were rattling off like like a machine gun. If I had a tape recorder, it could have been a book. And um, Moses and, and, and Paul and this and that and everything. And this kid started like heaving, literally heaving as if like something you never forget if you saw it. And, and I, so we prayed and he prayed the sinners. For, he was a, a Christian years and years ago, I guess. Grew up in the, whatever. And um, he and so, okay, so that went, that happened. That was really bizarre. When Because when he left, it took me 20 minutes just to compose myself. I said, I can't walk out of this room. I, I look, someone's going to look at me like, what's wrong with you? We were, that's how heavy we were. We were crying and praying. And um, so it was within a day or two later, um, I went home. I went to the mailbox. And there were the books from, uh, um, I still have them. Your rights as a, as a Christian, students' rights, uh, legal stuff from law, Center of Law and Justice. And what it had transpired was legal. And I didn't even know it. And um, so I said, wow. This, that's... He initiated the question. Class was dismissed. I, I, I had no idea that that was actually legal. And so after a short time, I said, I, I planned this out, kind of like the Lord helped me guide this. I said, all right. I said, so I would teach up to a point and to kind of like get people's attention and get their like curiosity with history real history christ the christ of, of uh you know our history which you cannot remove christ out of history go ahead and try it you don't make yourself a fool and so i'd say but after class i'll dismiss everybody and we could have a talk and we could talk that went on for 10 years the administration knew about it I was bypassing all the norms. The the, the, the CEOs used to call me up and say, okay, boss, well, I need their names, and, you know, the off-count slips. And I started doing off-count slips in the classroom. Unheard of. Nobody does this. And 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 they would just they, they would call me up and captains and people behind the scenes were saying, let it go. Leave it alone. Don't worry about it. I was so I said, okay. And it ended up, I know I know times ended up um it, it, things started like moving and it ended up Christianity versus Islam. 
And so I said, oh boy, um, I'm going to have to really hit the books. And so I started studying Islam by, within 10 years, I knew more about Islam than any Muslim, even them imams in the prison. Um, at fast forward earlier, later, uh, we started having uh, in-depth conversations. The imams were terrified of me. They, they didn't want to, they didn't want to engage in any kind of dialogue. They didn't want to engage in any kind of issues. Um, and here, here, I'll just read, read the scripture. And, and it was and in between all of this time. Trust me when I tell you, I'm leaving out so many battles, real, real battles. I'm talking about people trying to get me fired, lying, um, even administrators and different people. And, and so I, I remember, and I stood on the scriptures in, in um, chapter, Acts chapter 4. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and took knowledge of them. And, and so, you know, you know the story. Um, they commanded them. Now, these are councils, religious leaders, backed up by the authorities of the Roman Empire. Um, and so you're, they're standing in front of all of these leaders, all of these authority figures. And they turn around. So let me ask you a question. You're educated. Should I obey God or man? And that scripture burned so, so powerfully in my heart. And I said, I got, I got, there's no way in the world I could deny you. As far as, I said, listen, you're in control of this. I know that you want me to witness to these inmates. I know that you love these guys. It was in my heart and I knew it. And I could only say what I know and I read and I see. And that's what they said. And so they, they turned around and, and then after they, they uh, allowed them to, you know, let them go, they continued. And then it says, and they, be, they continued to speak the word with all boldness um, and, um, and that's literally was the testimony um, that Christ and history are inseparable. This, this book is a historical book. It's founded in history. And so if you want to really, you know, be an effective witness, um, study the truth of history. And what you'll see is God's always showing up. He's always manifesting his power, his self in history. And that's what I was able to do. I, I was able to take real history and infuse it into the curriculum, infuse it into the, the everyday lessons. And um, the last thing I'll share was uh, this one was pretty big. I, and I used to teach a systematic history from 500 BC all the way through systematically the chronological history and teach about the, the uh, Western civilization and all that, blah, 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 blah. So obviously the Great Reformation was a big part of that. And so I, I was, I taught for years on the Great Reformation where this one particular guy was really sneaky, um, really uh, just whatever, older guy in his 40s. And um, so he would, he would kept asking questions and, and um, but then as, as, as it turned out, um, they called me down to the office and this principal said, you really did it this time, Bosco. Well, I, you know, we've, we've been trying to tell you and trying to tell you and trying to tell you, you just won't listen. You're trying to say separate church or state. I said, no way. It's not the original constitution. You know, I said, you're making this stuff up. That's all. I said, anyway, I argue. We're not going to argue. We're not going to argue. We're done arguing. Well, I already had research on academic freedom. And I had all kinds of resources right at my disposal. Prior to that, um, I had another issue where they were talking about history. And the superintendent of the school gave me history books. And he says, he says, here, you can have these history books. He says, because whatever, long story, in those history books that they gave me, they talked about the Reformation, pictures of Martin Luther, and all this stuff. Academic freedom. I had all my research. Anytime a school district gives you literature or books or textbooks and they reference a historical figure as a teacher with academic freedom you could fill in blanks you could expound on the on the events or the characters as long as it's objective and it's primary source the documents blah 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 which I, I had well anyways this guy said um i destroyed his faith in catholicism and he was going to commit suicide and um it was a pretty big deal. 
to, to a lot of people. They, they were, took it real serious. And as a result of having all of that um, information and being able to back up um, the truth of history, um, they all backed out. Every one of them backed down and just said, you know, we're, we're just going to leave this thing alone. Um, and that was one of just, and, and, and if I told you the real details of how stressful and, and how fear was trying to like grip my heart in that process, um, it was just amazing. But, but, but God just in his mercy um, kept me. And to be able to retire after 25 years, which is five more years after, uh, is a testimony in and of itself. Now, the whole th reason I'm sharing all this was the whole time you guys were behind the scenes praying almost. I was so embarrassed to keep raising my hands past that. I was like, ah, I'm not going to raise my hands again. Come on. These people are going to think I'm such a baby. But I was every, every week I'm raising my hand. Please, guys, pray for me. Stuff's going on at work. Please, guys, pray for me. Stuff's going on. And, and really, and, and Pastor knows a few, but I could tell you, um, without exaggeration, I know uh, probably a hundred inmates that came to the Lord and committed their lives to Christ. And a lot of them were raised um, by grandparents and, and went to church. And so they had those seeds. And then as the, the word was, was shared, their hearts began to melt. And, and they had nowhere else to go. They were at their bottom. And I was like, God will forgive you. He loves you. And so, and so many guys came to the Lord. And, they, and I, I just want to encourage you that uh, sometimes you don't be afraid. Uh, like Acts chapter 4, be bold because God... It's going to, not always what we think, but uh, that's obeying him, right? Yeah.